In this video, I'm going to extend the ideas that we learned in solving polynomial inequalities to solve rational inequalities. Now, a rational inequality is one that looks like this. We'll say the directions are solve, and the inequality is x minus 10 over x minus 2 is greater than 0. Let me show you a common mistake that people make. Often I don't like to show a wrong way to do a problem, but it is so common that I do need to address it. Many people look at this and think they'll just multiply both sides by x minus 2 to clear out the fractions, so let's do that. And the x minus 2's cancel. And so we would have x minus 10 is greater than 0. And we get x is greater than 10. So as my solution, I would have the interval from 10 to infinity. So that means that numbers like 11 or 12 or 300 would be solutions. And any number smaller than 10, like 5 or 0 or negative 13, should not be solutions. But let me point this out. Suppose we choose the number 0 and substitute it in. 0 is not in this interval right here, so 0 should not be a solution. So if I pop 0 in, it shouldn't make the inequality true. So I have 0 minus 10 over 0 minus 2, and we're testing to see if it's greater than 0. We would have negative 10 over negative 2 is greater than 0. That is 5 is greater than 0, and that is true. That means 0 is a solution to the inequality that we're working with. But notice it is not listed right here in the interval. So here's what that means. It means that we have done something wrong. This is not correct. Well, what could be incorrect about it? We didn't really do that much. We multiplied both sides by x minus 2, and then we added 10. How could that be wrong? Well, let me remind you about this. When you have an inequality and you're solving, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you always turn around the sign. You change the direction of the sign. In this problem, remember we multiplied both sides by x minus 2 right here? Well, is that x minus 2 positive or is that x minus 2 negative? And the answer to that is, well, sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative. And that is the problem. We don't know whether we should turn around the sign or not. Under some conditions, it's positive, so we shouldn't turn around the sign. And in some cases, it's negative, so we should turn around the sign. So in fact, this strategy doesn't work. So let's go back and solve the inequality correctly. So the directions are still solve. And it is x minus 10 over x minus 2 is greater than 0. But we're going to solve this much like we do polynomial inequalities. We're trying to determine when this quotient is positive and when it's negative. And that quotient can only change from positive to negative or negative to positive at real numbers that make the numerator 0 or make the denominator 0. So here's what I'm saying. We're going to interval test just like we did when solving polynomial inequalities. And the numbers that we're going to put on the number line are going to be the numbers that make the numerator 0 or the denominator 0. So the numbers are 10 and 2. And now we're going to interval test and determine and determine which intervals contain the numbers that make the ratio positive and which intervals contain the numbers that make it negative.
So let's jump in. We'll test the interval to the right of 10. So let's choose 11. If we substitute 11 into that ratio, we'd have 11 minus 10 over 11 minus 2. And again, I don't care about the value of that expression exactly. I care about whether it's positive or negative. Now, 11 minus 10 is positive. 11 minus 2 is positive. Positive divided by positive is positive. And in fact, any number that's greater than 10 will make that ratio positive. Let's pick a number in between 2 and 10, like 5. 5 minus 10 over 5 minus 2 it gives us a negative divided by a positive, with the result being negative. Similarly, I choose a number to the left of 2. 0 is in that interval, so I'll choose that number. 0 minus 10 divided by 0 minus 2 is a negative divided by a negative, and that result is positive. Now I'm going to exclude 10 because it makes the numerator 0, and we only want numbers that make the ratio positive. So it will be excluded. And I'm going to exclude 2 as well. And we want the numbers that make that ratio positive, so we want the numbers to the left of 2. And we would like the real numbers to the right of 10. So our solution in interval notation for this inequality is negative infinity to 2 union 10 to infinity. And feel free to check any number that is in either of those intervals. You'll find that they make the inequality true. Anything that is not in those intervals would make it be false. Let's move on. Let's solve this inequality. x plus 1 times x minus 6 over 4 minus x is less than or equal to 0. Notice that we already have a 0 on one side because our test is always with respect to 0. Is the quotient positive or is the quotient negative? And the numerator is already factored. The denominator is prime. So let's go. Let's set up our number line and determine our critical values. The critical values are any numbers that make the numerator or denominators 0. So in the numerator, we find that negative 1 is a critical value. We also have 6 from the numerator. And in the denominator, the number that makes that 0 is 4. And then we'll do our interval testing. Pick a number to the right of 6, like 7. 7 means that we would have a positive times a positive divided by a negative. Right? I got those signs based on substituting in a 7. So if we take a positive times a positive divided by a negative, the result is negative. Choose a number between 4 and 6, like 5. And we would have a positive times a negative divided by a negative. Now that would give us a positive value. Choose a number between negative 1 and 4, like 0. And we would have a positive times a negative divided by a positive, and our result is negative. Choose a number to the left of negative 1, like, like negative 3, and we will have a negative times a negative divided by a positive, and that gives us a positive result. So let's find the solution to this inequality. And let's consider the critical values first. Notice this time we want numbers that make the ratio negative or 0. Negative 1 certainly makes the ratio 0, so let's include it. And so does 6. 
because those numbers make the numerator zero and zero over a number is equal to zero. But look at four, what does four do? Four, if you substitute it in, will give us a zero in the denominator. And we know that when we have a fraction with a zero in the denominator, it is undefined. So this has the extra little wrinkle in it that we will include as part of our solution some of the critical values, but not all of them. Four must be excluded because it makes the denominator zero. So besides our values of negative one and six, we also need to include the values that make this ratio negative. So those are the numbers between negative one and four and the numbers that are greater than six. So our solution to this inequality is negative one to four, making sure negative one is closed and four is open, union six to infinity, making sure that six is closed. And we have this problem finished. Let's look at our next one. It will be to solve this inequality. It is x minus 3 times x plus 7 squared divided by x minus 10. And I want to know when that ratio is greater than or equal to 0. It's much like the one on the left, so let's jump in. I'm going to draw my number line. My critical values are at 3, negative 7, and 10. We test a number to the right of 10, like 11. That would give us a positive times a positive divided by a positive, and that result is positive. Choose a number between 3 and 10, like 5. 5 minus 3 is positive, 5 plus 7 squared is positive, and 5 minus 10 is negative. And that result is negative. Let's test 0 next. 0 minus 3 is negative, 0 plus 7 squared is positive, and 0 minus 10 is negative. And we have a positive result. And last, our number to the left of negative 7 could be negative 10. Negative 10 would make this, uh, negative 10 minus 3 would be negative. Negative 10 plus 7 squared is positive, because we're squaring the number. Negative 10 minus 10 is a negative. So again, I would have a negative divided by a negative with a positive result. And before we continue, let me make the point that we saw with rational inequalities. And that is this. When we're looking at this expression, notice the exponents were odd, even, and odd. When the critical value came from a factor with an odd exponent, as in the case of this 3, the signs on either side were different. On the critical value, this negative 7, that came from this factor that was to an even exponent, the signs on either side stayed the same. We saw that when we were solving uh, polynomial inequalities. Notice on the problem on the left, all of the factors are to the first power, and the signs bounced back and forth between negative and positive. So that's kind of handy to keep in mind when you're solving inequalities, either rational or polynomial inequalities. So let's state the solutions to this one. We want to include any numbers that make the fraction equal to 0. That means both 3 and, uh, 3 and negative 7 need to be included, but 10 definitely needs to be excluded. And we want to include any numbers that make this fraction greater than zero. That means positive. 
So we want numbers to the left of negative 7, numbers between negative 7 and 3, and numbers to the right of 10. So our solution to this inequality would be negative infinity up to 3. Notice I did not break it negative 7 because negative 7 is included. And then we have union 10 to infinity. The wrinkle on these is to pay attention to those endpoints. People often aren't careful to exclude the numbers that make the denominator 0. Let's go on and do another problem. Here it is. 3x plus 1 over x plus 7 is less than 2. Again, on problems like this, people have the temptation to multiply both sides by x plus 7 and clear out the fractions. It's a serious mistake to do that, not a small one. It's a substantial error. So we can't do that because, remember, we don't know whether x plus 7 is positive or negative. And that's why we can't clear out that fraction. And we don't have a 0 on the right-hand side. But just like with the polynomial inequalities, we need to force there to be a 0 on one side. So let's subtract 2. Our inequality becomes 3x plus 1 over x plus 7 minus 2 is less than 0. But I need that to be written as a single fraction, as it was in our previous examples. So I need to build a common denominator. I'm just subtracting fractions. We know when we do that, we build a common denominator. And the common denominator with these two fractions would be x plus 7. So I'm going to multiply by x plus 7 over x plus 7. My numerator becomes 3x plus 1 minus 2x minus 14. My denominator is x plus 7, and I still have the less than 0. Simplifying the numerator gives me x minus 13 over x plus 7 is less than 0. Do you see that it's similar to the other problems that we've already done? Let's draw our number line and do our interval testing now. Our critical values are 13 and negative 7. I pick a number to the right of 13, like 20. 20 would give me a positive in the numerator and a positive in the denominator. Positive divided by positive is a positive. And now I'm going to make use of the fact that the exponents on each of these is just a 1. That means the signs are going to bounce back and forth between positive and negative. And I'm going to make use of that. So I have a plus to the right of 13. That means I would have a minus between negative 7 and 13. And a plus to the left of negative 7. And you could certainly just use numbers to do the interval testing there. So our solution to this one would mean we would exclude both the 13 and the negative 7 because we don't want it to be undefined and we don't want the fraction to equal 0. We want it to be negative. So that implies we have just a single interval and it would be negative 7 to 13. Let's solve another one. Let's let it be this. 5 over x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3 over x minus 5. Again, we cannot clear out the fractions in this inequality because we have variables in the denominator. So I'm going to treat it much like the one on the left and get a 0 on one side. So let's subtract the 3 over x minus 5 from both sides. And our inequality becomes 5 over x plus 1 minus 3 over x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. I have the subtraction of two fractions again, which means I need to build a common denominator. Let's see, I have an x plus 1 and an x minus 5, so the common denominator would be their product. 
So on the first fraction, I'm going to multiply by x minus 5 over x minus 5. And in the second fraction, I'll multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So my numerator becomes 5x minus 25 minus 3x minus 3. Make sure you're careful in the numerator to get that negative to uh, that negative distributed. So we still have x plus 1 times x minus 5 in the denominator. Let's simplify further. We have 2x minus 28 over x plus 1 times x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. And let's just factor out the 2 in the numerator. I have 2 times x minus 14 over x plus 1 times x minus 5, and I want that to be greater than or equal to 0. Now it's all factored, so I can see my critical values easily. So let me draw my number line. 2 does not generate a critical value. x minus 14 generates 14 as my critical value. In the denominator, I will find that I have a negative 1 and a 5. And let's start with our interval testing. I'll pick a number to the right of 14, like 15. 15 would mean that we have a positive 2 times a positive number divided by a positive number times another positive number. And everything's positive, so the result will be positive. Notice that the exponents on each of these factors that generated a critical value has an odd exponent, so I know the signs will bounce back and forth between positive and negative. So I'll just fill those in. We're looking to see where this fraction equals 0 or is greater than 0. Well, it equals 0 at any place the numerator is 0, so we're going to include 14. We will exclude negative 1 and 5 because they make the denominator 0. And we need to include any numbers that make the ratio positive, so we'll include the numbers between negative 1 and 5 and the numbers to the right of 14. So the solution to this inequality is negative 1 to 5, union 14 to infinity, making sure that negative 1 and 5 are open and 14 is closed. I hope you'll go solve some rational inequalities.